And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Trindamir Anivia. This is going to be a Vault of Helia deck. That's right. Uh, playing another cool landmark. Kind of all of our decks are so far have been based around a cool landmark. This is a five mana um, Shadow Isles one round start. If you can kill your most expensive ally to summon an ally from your deck that costs one more. So that's any ally, including champions. Whatever's the most expensive one you have in play, you kill it, and then go look through your deck, put something else in play. So let's kind of look at our chain here. It kind of starts at Babbling Bjerg as like where it really starts. Like we have Tavern Keeper at three. You know, like we have like these low, you know, low cost things, Tavern Keeper at three. Not like really a great thing to put into play, but you know, that's all right. You know, because it doesn't have a summon effect. But then Babbling Bjerg has a summon effect because you summon it from your deck into play. Um, so then, you know, your Babbling Bjerg will draw and expensive unit you know something with five plus power you then we'll have hearth guard put into play buff everything in the deck then we sacrifice hearth guard put in anivia anivia is obviously really good sacrifice anivia put in rekindler that puts another anivia back into play like that's just a great combo and then we sacrifice the rekindler to put in trindamir into play there we go get to this big overwhelm and then we sacrifice trindamir which it's okay to sacrifice trindamir because trindamir will come back as a nine nine um overwhelm with that fearsome so that's that's pretty awesome. And then we put Ledros into play at the top end. So really cool chain here um, with Vaults of Helia doing all that kind of stuff. We're also going to be able to play just kind of like a, a good normal control game with having um, you know things all over the curve. We'll have three Withering Whales for defense, a couple of Vengeance, and a Ruination as well. Um, and then some early removal to Black Spear and Vile Feast, good early blockers. So this should be a, a pretty decent deck. Like, you know, like we should be able to just play some good defense early and just let our top end take over. That's that's the plan. That's the plan. So this was a viewer submitted list. I didn't touch it at all. I didn't change any cards. Um, it looks pretty fun. And so let's let's get to it. Trindamir Anivia, two champions. Don't see very much play. But we're also gonna be playing a Vault of Helia. Excited about that. We haven't played Vaults of Helia in a while. Okay, so we're playing against another um, landmark deck. I hope they don't Desert Naturalist my Vaults of Helia. That would be very, very rude. Those two are going to get mulliganed. And honestly, like with this matchup, I don't think we really need Icefield Archer. I kind of want to, you know, like look for Vaults and, um, you know, like Babbling Beer, Vaults, Hearth Guard. Like those kind of cards in the mid game are all important to see. Escapes my watch. Okay, let's get these entries in play. Do some attacking, do some blocking, draw some cards. Would you look at this place? Who is like me, except very different in every way. I'll set up a withering whale for killing their stuff. Alert the villains. Where are you? What are the white dots in the sky? So I haven't seen any of like the, the three cards that I mentioned is like the cards that I want to draw the most. Um, wait. Really? Okay. Wasn't expecting that. But, you know, Battling Bjerg, Vault of Helia, and Avaros and Hearthguard. Haven't seen any of those yet. Hmm, Veil Temple's good. That's a good target for Talia, the Veil Temple. Both of their champions are leveled up. They've played a lot of landmarks. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. They're going to have a lot of mana now. And we don't have a Nivea, so we really don't have like our four best cards. <laughs> Mm. 
Yeah, we don't have our four best guards. If I stumble, I have the earth to catch you. Oh. Like threading a needle. I just have nothing to do here. I'm doing this for the vulnerable. I don't, you know, obviously we're going to play Trindomir next round. I don't really want the Trindomir to have the vulnerable. Because, you know, if Trindomir dies, then Rekindler is putting it back into play. Now, the thing, like, Trindomir and Rekindler don't work perfectly together. Because, like, if Trindomir dies, of course, it, it gets the level up. Um, well, I guess it level it levels up first. Then the level up part has to die first. But then you're you're just putting in the level up part. So you're putting in the um, nine nine. Only you were made of rock. So does it mean you need to have like 10 mana of landmarks in play whenever you play Malphite? Because <laughs> if that's the case, they still got that covered. I will go this way. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> they have a lot of cards over there. I guess it doesn't make a ton of sense to do that. I kind of imagine they have Hush, right? Like that's that's the thing about like having Battle Furies. I, I imagine that they have Hush. Ice Veil just doesn't really matter, right? Like I Ice Veil that thing, but they still just block with Trindamir. It just doesn't really matter. I'd much rather kind of save it on defense here. That egg, did it move? Be really nice to draw on Anivia. That's not bad. They have 10 cards, they gotta play stuff. So we can kinda wait to see what they play. They still have 10 cards, they gotta play stuff. Or not. Sweet. Alright, there goes Malphite. And they don't they don't have room for the unstoppable force, of course. Tell me y'all could have played that that stuff. Or like played could at least played like the uh um zero mana card to give them a space in their hand to draw something. Man, 
They just have every champion in their deck. So that's the third Talia. We've already seen two Malphites gone. So they only have one more Malphite in their deck is for a champion. Relax your knees. With no overwhelm, just only does two damage to me. Not the big deal. My blade grows restless. <laughs> All right, well, there's champion number six. One candle for every soul. Sure. Just Targon stuff. No biggie. Just Targon stuff. Seven. We have one other vengeance that'd be really nice to draw to be able to kill this Malphite. So this should have like 3-3 three, three block Ledros, 11-13 block Trindamir, 7-5 block Tavern Keeper. That doesn't seem like a very good attack. But also not attacking and letting them stun everything doesn't sound like a good plan either. So Ledros should definitely attack, but I guess that's it. They did exactly at the very beginning of the game. I said, hope they don't naturalist kill the vaults. And they did. That's me. Man, they really like these Veil Temples. I'll probably just cover up the Veil Temple. This is where we need Atrocity. Don't kill me. Ah, that killed me. Alright, well, sometimes your opponent draws every single champion. And obviously the star shapings. Uh, you know, really killed us, because then like the one star shaping we had to ruination, then the other star shaping obliterated two Trindomirs.
Alright, Soraka Tom Kench. So this is going to be another deck that's going to play a slower game. Ruination's going to be really important for this one. I don't know... Like, I guess they have Bastion. Yeah, we can we can have Vile Feast to break up a Bastion. Okay, I love having the Babbling Bjergs. We just get... You know, we get, like, the mid part of our game. Remember, like, that was, like, the, the problem there is we had nothing in the mid game. We had no Babbling Bjerg, Avros, and Hearthguard, Vaults of Helia, or... I'll play you. Or Anivia, right? So, like, our, our five, like mid-range cards, like middle cards, like the, the bridge, the early game, and the late game. We had none of those five last game. I don't know if there's any way for us to get rid of the Star Spring. I don't think there is, is there? There's no Star Spring removal in here. I don't think there is. Yeah, Star Spring's gonna be a problem. We don't kill people very fast. Looks like a pretty good hand. To heal and protect. Take heart. Live with purpose. We fight for one frail yard. So I don't want to like attack and let them let their things get damaged. I don't want to help damage their things. Our banner will lead the way for the homestead. I was hoping to cover up one of these two, you know, with the Icefell Archer the next round. Wasn't able to. Which I can't sacrifice my own things or anything like that. It's just definitely not good to play Withering Whale. Withering Will just really helped out their Star Spring. Find the goodness in you, River King. Who only provides temporary sustenance, child? Not and ready. It's just it's so bad against Astral Protection to play Black Spear. It's also kind of bad to attack with Anivia. Second Black Spear. Stand together. Yeah, so this game ends of like basically if I don't kill them here. Um, I like that we drew a second Black Spear. Go no further. Yeah, Star Spring's a really, really bad matchup for us. That's quite unfortunate. They and you know they had the Star Spring on round two. With purpose. That's really unfortunate. A world in perfect stillness.
Okay, so if they have an astral protection, the game's over anyway. So I guess there's no reason to play around astral protection because it the game's over if they have it. So now, Bastion's kind of the main question. I guess if they have Bastion, the game's kind of over anyway also, isn't it? No, 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 not really. I guess not. Like, next turn, can I beat a Bastion? No, they just have anything else that takes damage. So they're going to be at 21 out of 22. So maybe out of all those cards over there, none of them are a unit. Well, it doesn't do anything. Now play Bastion. Tap out. Whoa! They messed up! <laughs> I don't think we deserve that one. I don't know what 10 cards they had in their hand, but that couldn't have been the best plan. All right, this should be a this should be the best matchup for us so far. Riley, they're not going to have crazy Targon cards, um, so that's good. You know, the GDX had crazy Targon cards. Vengeance, yeah, it's got to be, got to be sent back. Yeah, it says will. Not be surprised if they're a deny deck. Where are you? We can definitely lose. I'm not saying that we're going to win this. But we don't have to face unfair Targon cards. Alright, have good work. Good day at work, Nasher. Okay. We'll take the card draw. Even though it's not the best, since I already have the hapless aristocrat just to do some blocking for me. Here, might as well just draw a card. What would you wish oh, I love that card. That card's great. Opponent's smart. They're playing Greenglade Elder. They shouldn't have put the They shouldn't have put that other two drop in play first, but. They're definitely smart by playing Greenblade Elder. Okay, so it looks like it could be just a whole bunch of elusives that kill us. That's a possibility. We fight for one frail yard. Our banner will lead the way. So. Something going to be pretty buff. Pretty buff. So like one of these cards over here has the plus one plus one from the elder and a plus three plus three from dual protector. Really hope they don't have a deny. Let yourself to the shadows. I can kind of block that thing. See, I'm at round six. So like I play a Nivea, I block with a Nivea. So Nivia dies, then I play Rekindler next round. It's only seven, and then like the next round I'm like Vengeance, Valtelia, stuff like that. Then the next round, Anivia's still not back. And then the next round, then Anivia's back. And then we get to Ruination. That's a long time from now, before we get to Ruination. That's probably fine. Something ancient stirs. No greater gift than knowledge. No. That card's so good. Green Glade Elder I'm talking about. Hmm. That card's so good. Master. Walk softly. Strike quickly. Please, I have connections. Oh, 
mean, I could I could block Zed. I can't really block elusives and like how they're they're buffing up all this other stuff in their hand a, a ton also, kind of saving the ice fill archer a little bit. Kill Greenblade Elder. I'm so jealous of the opponent with this Greenblade Elder. These things are going to be absolutely huge. They follow the wrong master. I will endure. Good for me. So this this has got to be like a, a bounce spell, right? Wait. Okay, so that's Zed. All right. So this card right here is just another copy of Zed because they just because they use it as a spell and then put it back and then gave it plus three plus three. So that's a Zed. So we know that. So like let's say I attack first, they block with jeweled protector, then pass to me. What's my what's my play at that point? I guess at that point I have to play like I because then I can't really ruination, because then I ruination and then they unload and play other stuff, and then I and then they open attack with like Zed and I'm dead. So that's the problem that's a problem with attack first. I think I have to pass. I don't think I can do anything. I walk your path alone. Okay, so now I attack, they block. No, I guess I, I just got a ruination now. Yeah. The thing is, that's not even that wasn't even their Zed that we know about. Like the, this one's also Zed. What would you wish to learn? Looking for a daring escape. Eternal winter. The order rewards its faithful. Isn't this then? I was kind of going Battle Fury style, but. Return to us. Like this. It's a problem. Snow, wind, and ice. You call that sneaky? I guess it's not very much of a problem. Okay, GG's. Got him. Double Anivia. That was a close game right there. I I feel like after my um, 
after my ruination, my opponent. I, I thought for sure they had another Zed. Okay, we're playing against another Targon deck, unfortunately. Whenever you're trying to go big like this, you really just don't want to see Targon. I mean, Ruination can be good, but I don't want to keep Ruination in the opener. But Ruination can definitely be a card that's necessary against a whole bunch of dragons. I don't really know why I'm keeping Icefield Archer. I should have mulliganed Icefield Archer. It's a good card late in the game, but it's like... Yeah, see, I don't want to play it on round two. I should have mulliganed that. Block. Probably would have been a pretty decent, like, sharp sight block if they're into that kind of thing. No Shivana. No Shivana. Boo. Just those few couple of things. I'll hold on to Vengeance. Oh, well now we have another Vengeance. Because, you know, Vengeance can kill some super big dragons. Lieutenant, have you brought a specimen from the field? We let you keep the egg. Be yeah. content with that. <laughs> Two-two hapless wrist grant. Not and ready. Two arms. Not my favorite turn. <laughs> Seriously? This is just the best time to draw hapless aristocrats. I have to save the mana for Vile Feast Vengeance on Aurelian Soul. They always have. Oh, they don't! But still, like, you know, Shivana into Screeching Dragon, into Eclipse Dragon so far. Play Demos, you get all, like with these challengers, you get all the control, right? Like they determine what do they want to block with, or sorry, what do they want to attack with, and also what do I want to block with. So I can make a challenger a really, really powerful ability. Okay, just attacking there. Get me out of here. Card. Follow the tracks. Ready weapons. Yeah, so they they just want to clear up room, of course. Yeah, my hand's terrible. I got nothing. I don't have any broken cards like a really soul. Without my attention. Hopefully they only play one Aurelian Soul. But they still, of course, have 
many, many more cards than we do. We, I just don't, I don't have any card advantage in here. Like, I don't, like, the deck list that I was given here just doesn't have, um, you know, any card advantage. Like, I got no, no Glimpse Beyonds, no nothing, no Stalking Shadows. And so against Targon that has infinite cards, we just run out. That's how that is. Please, I have connections! This is our homeland! My life for Avarosa! Stand and defend! A really insult wasn't good enough to like take multiple cards from me. <laughs> Gotta have that thing too. I'm something of an aspiring ecologist. Yeah, gotta hope. No. Our banner will lead the way. I hope no hush, and also gotta hope now. Now them playing just another elusive. I hope they play something before attacking. The more we learn, the less we fear. Obviously, next round. All right, Targon's just too busted for our deck. Let's just try to play against any other region. Because, <laughs> you know, like, we're a really late-game deck with Trindamir and Anivia, but they just don't match up against Targon, unfortunately. It's the only region we don't want to see. Okay, it's not Targon. We'll take it. We will take it. Is this going to be a good matchup? Probably not. This deck's, you know, a very good Tier 1 deck, but it's not Targon, so we have a chance. Let's see. Am I just keeping these two? So we got. Do you have three withering whales in the deck? Cool. Those can be very useful. Um, trying to kill Azir though. Like Azir is going to be like the biggest problem, which is why I kept the black spear because that's something that can maybe help us kill Azir. Be the best if our opponent doesn't have his ear. That'd be the best. Just keep playing a whole bunch of one health things. That's what we want to see. We want to see a lot of green glade duos. Green glade duo. Show them no weakness. Close enough. Not his ear, so that's good. Kratol is a mountain and covered in ice! Oh, you and your stories. Battle senses! Bar the doors! Alright, so we're at 14. I am planning on playing Vaults of Helio this next round. They obviously have protection for that thing with uh, 
you know, like with bounce spells and stuff. So this next round is going to be my Withering Whale round. Turn this 3-1 into a 5-5. Five five. Doing this before they get the Blade Surge, but I guess they do get to resummon the Anivia and do this all again, though, so that's annoying. Oh, wow, I was not expecting that. Haven't seen too many dies. In this deck. Oh, I was not expecting that. What's that noise? Is that lethal? Yes, that is lethal. Right? I go block, block, block. I guess that puts me down to. No, it's lethal. Right? The switch there. No, I guess it puts me down to one, I think. This is our homeland! Let's talk about your town. Because they swat. I guess that just puts me down to one. I don't think they can kill me. Unless, you know, obviously they have a pump spell to kill me. Because I'm going to one. But I think we're going to one. Yeah, it's really Azir deck looks pretty good. I'd still rather play against this than Targon, though. Okay, so they're letting me keep some life. I like it. Very nice of them. I feel pretty good about this right now. I think we're... I don't know, I think we have a pretty good chance of winning this. Since, especially since they didn't put me down to one, I feel a lot better about it. For my homeland. Ooh, Delphinus getting the 1v1. It's a best of three, the 1v1 is. Okay, that's the card that... That was worried, okay. Even like after I said that, I was like, I really hope they don't lead and follow. That's really the... That was, like, the card. Yeah, that was the card. So I could have played a third blocker first, but then I wouldn't have Harsh Winds available. Gross. Yeah, this is this is over now. Oh, I guess it's not completely over. I just have to use Harsh Winds, unfortunately. I protect this place. I will endure. I kind of misclicked there. I meant to do this one. <laughs> and I just, I kind of just went too far. And I guess it just like instincts kind of took over there with the Sand Soldier. I obviously meant to keep my spider alive because this thing's dying. So this thing taking one damage doesn't mean anything. So that's my bad. I definitely meant to have that spider still. See what we see, soldier. Whoops. Withering Whale, please. Them having that deny for my Withering Whale, that was pretty brutal. That was pretty brutal. Tipsy out. 
Okay. Two and three. Um, we did get to do some some pretty cool stuff here. Like I said, the, the Targon decks just go over the top. Um, that a really a Zier matchup isn't necessarily. I don't know. Like you you have like some good stuff with the Withering Whales. That the deny like that's a card you don't see in that matchup very often. The deny for the Withering Whale was huge, and then you know the Syncopation was pretty nice, saving that really as well. But that was a real big time deny. Whenever we did cast our Withering Whale. Um, but I, I, I saw some cool stuff going on. You like, we are a Vault of Helia deck, right? So, like, we're not going to be a top of the metagame kind of deck. Like, we're a Vault of Helia deck. But I did like, um, you know, having that with um, Anivia Rekindler into Trindamir. Like, you know, that was that was a pretty cool um, thing going on. But Rekindler, Trindamir, that's... These two cards don't really work that well together, uh, as you saw throughout those games. Like, where... You had to have your Trindomir die, and then Trindomir has... But then it does it just levels up, so then it has to die again, and then at that point, then you can start putting it back into play with Rekindler. But or but then you only get the 9-9. You don't get the ability to have Trindomir live twice. I think really one thing that I just wish that we had was, like, Atrocity to help, like, win some games, like, like especially against, like, the Malphite deck and the Aurelian Soul deck, like, when the games are just going, like, real long, and we just... We can't... We can't really attack through... Unless we have like Anivia's, I think that some atrocities could really help finish the games. But I like Battling Beer Carthguard quite a bit. I thought that like those like the Battling Beer Carthguard, Valtahelia, Anivia, like that middle part of our deck. I think that that was all very strong. All right, but there we go. That was Trindomir Anivia. I would also I would just play more of these spells over over Hapless Aristocrats. I don't think Hapless Aristocrats very good. I would I would play like another Vile Feast. Like Vile Feast was was very useful. I'd play probably just another Vile Feast and then um, you know another Black Spear or Vengeance or um, you know, something like that, like a Grass the Undying, a, a, a Flash Freeze, like Unspeakable Horror, um, Troll Chant, even, <laughs> you know, like something like that. Ice Shard, Ice Shard's awesome. Yeah, I could see some a couple Ice Shards in here. I think that'll probably do a little bit better than what the Hapless Aristocrat will do, like, like those kind of cards. All right, uh, but anyway, that's going to be here for this deck. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And as always, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of this Vault of Helia deck. And hopefully this gave you some good ideas for playing Vault of Helia in the future. Um, or we got any other comments for the deck or just like for next week for Mutier Monday, anything like that. Hopefully y'all are enjoying these videos. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next one.